Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about how to solve nonlinear systems of equations, and we're gonna look at the three methods all in this one video. So we'll separate them by chapters if you wanna skip ahead at the bottom. We're gonna talk about just an overview of a nonlinear system at the beginning, then we'll talk about how to solve by graphing, then substitution, and then last elimination. So at the beginning or on the screen right now, we see a couple different things, right? We see at the top, we see three parabolas with three lines, and that's representing a quadratic function and a linear function. So if we have a system with those two types of equations, then we could have three different types of solutions. Notice we have no intersection here, so that would be no solution. We have one intersection right there, so one solution, or we have two intersections, so two solutions. Okay. Now below that we have two parabolas, which would be two quadratic equations in the system. And so here we have no solution again. We could have one solution or we could have two solutions as well. Okay. So let's jump right in and let's start on graphing. All right, so our first example, we have graphing. We're gonna graph y equals x squared minus eight x plus 12 and y equals four x minus 24. Now, if you have a graphing calculator, you could just type these in real quick, use your intersection feature and you're done. Well, we'll do it by hand real quick just so that we can see how this process is done. And so let's graph our first equation, which is our quadratic. And let's start off by finding the axis of symmetry. So we know that is opposite of b over two a. So that's gonna be eight divided by two times one, which is four. So we could put our axis of symmetry through x equals four right there, and I'll make that a dashed line, okay? Now I know that my y-intercept would be 12, doesn't quite fit on my graph, so let's not put that right now, um, but let's go ahead and find where our vertex would be. So we're gonna say y equals x, well actually let's plug in four for x, so four squared minus eight times four plus 12, so we get 16 minus 32 plus 12. So we get negative 16 plus 12, and we get negative four. So our vertex would be at four, negative four, and we can plot that, four, negative four. Now let's just plug in another x value to plot another point on our parabola, and then we can reflect it over the axis of symmetry. So I'm gonna plug in when x is two. So let's say we have two squared minus eight times two plus 12. So four minus 16 plus 12. So negative 12 plus 12, and we get zero, which means we have the point two zero. So we could put that right there. And we would also have six zero, right? So we can graph our parabola now. Pretty good. All right, perfect. Now let's switch up our color. Let's go with a blue color. And let's graph our linear function now. So we have y equals 4x minus 24. So typically I would say begin by plotting your y-intercept, but once again, it doesn't fit on our graph. So what we can do is plot the intercepts, or not the y-intercept, but the x-intercept. Well, the x-intercept would be when y is equal to zero, right? So we could say zero is equal to 4x minus 24, which would be 24 equals 4x, so we would get x is equal to six. So we know x is equal to six, which is nice because we do have an intersection there. And now we can move with our slope. So our slope is four, so one, two, three, four, and one. One, two, three, four, and one. And now we could draw our line through these points here. And extend it a little bit going this way. Good. All right. And so now we see we have our intersection right there. And we would say that our solution to this system would be x equals six. And that would be our x value of our system or our x value of our solution, and our y value is equal to zero, right? So we have our solution to the system as six comma zero, okay? All right, now let's move on to substitution. So for substitution, we wanna make sure that each of our equations is equal to the same thing, and in this case, let's do y. So for our first equation, we have x squared plus two x minus y equals five. And let's write this as, let's add y and subtract five. So we get x squared plus two x minus five equals y. And then for this equation, let's write it as two x minus seven. It, actually, you know what? Let's write it as y equals negative two x plus seven. All right, so all we did there for that second one is just subtract two x to the other side. So now, since both of these are equal to y, we can now set the two expressions equal to each other. So let's write this as x squared plus two x minus five equals negative two x plus seven. 
And now we have a quadratic, we can combine like terms, set it equal to zero and solve the quadratic. So let's add 2x and subtract seven, subtract seven, add 2x. So now we have x squared plus 4x minus 12 is equal to zero. So now we have x squared minus 4x minus 12. Let's see if we can factor that. Do we have two numbers that add to four and multiply to negative 12? Not sure, do we? Add to four, multiply to negative 12. So let's try a process of completing the square. So let's add 12. So now we have x squared plus four x is equal to 12. Let's complete the square. So we have x squared plus four x, b divided by two squared. So four divided by two is two. So let's plus four. And that is equal to 12 plus four. So we'll come up here. So we have x squared plus four x plus four is equal to 16. This would be x plus two squared is equal to 16. We take the square root, so we get x plus two is equal to positive or negative four. And now let's subtract two, okay? So now we get x is equal to, uh, let's be four minus two and negative four minus two. So we're gonna get x is equal to two and x is equal to negative six, okay? So we did have solutions there, we could have factored it. Uh, couldn't think of that on the spot for whatever reason. Um, but we had, at this, uh, back when we were gonna factor it, we could have said um, add to four, multiply to negative 12, uh, would have been six and negative two, right? And then we would set those equal to zero and we would get two and negative six. So that just goes to show you, if you uh, have a little brain lapse there and you can't think of what how to factor it, go ahead and just move on to a different method, right? Don't waste your time trying to think of the factors. All right, so now for elimination, we have three x squared plus two x minus two y is equal to 10, and x squared minus six x plus two y is equal to negative 12. With elimination, we wanna make sure our like terms are vertically aligned. So we have our x squared terms, we have our x terms, we have our y terms, and we have our constants. So we are good to go there. Now we're looking for opposites or same coefficients so we could add or subtract. I notice here that we have a two y and a negative two y. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these two equations and that's going to eliminate my y variable. So now we have three x squared plus x squared. So that's four x squared. Two x plus negative six x, so it'd be minus four x. And this is equal to 10 plus negative 12, so negative two. So now I'm gonna write this in standard form. So four x squared minus four x plus two is equal to zero. And so now let's use the quadratic formula, okay? So let's say x is equal to opposite of b plus or minus b squared minus four a c all divided by two a. So we get x equals four plus or minus, this would be 16 minus and 32 divided by eight. So we get x is equal to four plus or minus negative 16 over eight. So x equals four plus or minus. So negative square root of negative 16, we could write that as square root of 16 times the square root of negative one. So four i and divide by eight. And so now we could simplify that and we could say x is equal to four over eight, one over two, right? So one plus or minus i divided by two. Okay, so two solutions there, one plus i divided by two, one minus i divided by two. And that's how you can solve a nonlinear system of equations by using graphing, substitution, and elimination.